Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. Um, sorry, my computer, I fried the motherboard on it this uh, weekend, but the good news is... Dell will actually be coming to my house on Wednesday with a new motherboard to replace it. So we won't be down for too long. In fact, I've, I've got to do some other work to kind of you know, at least get us ready for our live stream tonight. So don't forget to tune in 9 o'clock Eastern because we will, you know, the show must go on. If we have to go guerrilla style, we'll go guerrilla style. But trust me, we will be ready for you guys. Okay, so here we are as we sit here. 66 days, 10 hours, and 10 seconds away. Wow. 65 days until kickoff against Tampa Bay. Two weeks and two days, the Dallas Cowboys head to Oxnard. One month from today, today, July 5th, one month exactly, the Cowboys will hit the field for the first preseason game in two years against the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Hall of Fame game. And Joe Boo Sports Report, we shall be there. We'll be giving you the first look at the Dallas Cowboys. We'll be showing you the Hall of Fame, the induction ceremony. We'll be doing all that shit. So I hope you guys tune in. And this weekend, I'm even more excited about they have an autograph signing show at Chantilly, Virginia, Drew Pearson, as well as Tony Dorsett will be there, and Joe Boo Sports will be there as well because we're going to get the football gods up here, another one of the 77 Cowboys, the Cowboys greats. I'm looking forward to this. So speaking of our Dallas Cowboys great, you know, this is still silly season. Uh, two weeks, two days for the Dallas Cowboys to report, and three weeks and a couple of days for everybody else to report. And so – People want to keep you engaged. They want you to keep watching and, and, and all that and, and get those things, you know, the calm before the storm. You don't want people to lose focus. And so, of course, this is where everybody is trying to get their stuff in. So there's articles out that always link players to the Dallas Cowboys. You know, the story that just won't die is Richard Sherman. Oh, the Cowboys should sign Richard Sherman. You know, there's still K.J. Wright out there. And now uh, an article on Pro Football Focus was the one move that each team should make. Now, I want you to understand something. The Dallas Cowboys have actually done a hell of a lot. They've gotten a whole bunch of pieces in here, uh, different players and things. Um, in here on free agency, through the draft. And they've already started working with them. And so to just say randomly, let's throw somebody else into it, doesn't make sense at this point. You've already had guys that have been working out in OTAs and mini camp and you know strength training and stuff, have been in, working with the coaches and things and learning your system. To bring somebody in at this point, they're way behind the curve. And the thing is, unless they're a person that's a lights out player, then you don't want to take away from the pieces you've already got. You, you know what I'm saying? I've gone out and I bought a brand new drill, you know, new DeWalt. Got that one. And it's working pretty good so far. Then I go out. And I buy another one. Well, then this one's not that I spent money on. It's not getting used. Now I got two drills to do one job. And I can't use both of them right now. Did I just waste money on getting that one? Because now I'm going to use this one? That's the first thing. The second thing is the Cowboys are broke. As of right now, we have $5.8 million of cap space. That's it. 5.8 million in cap space. For the 2022 and 23 season, we're over the cap already. So 
bringing in somebody just for the sake of bringing somebody in wouldn't make sense. Sonny Richard Sherman doesn't make sense right now. But this article, I wanted to bring out the point that they say that the Dallas Cowboys should do. The Dallas Cowboys are almost always linked to any splashy move with a potential to occur. <laughs> we know that. Immediately, somebody, you know, starts talking about wanting to leave. Oh, the Cowboys should sign. Somebody gets cut. Cowboys should sign. You know, Richard Sherman linked to the Cowboys. Hell, I'm surprised we haven't heard anybody say Cowboys should sign, you know, uh, Earl Thomas. Or, or what's the guy uh, from uh, the Kansas City Chief, uh, uh, Safety. I'm surprised those aren't still going around because usually they do. The team isn't in a financial space to make something along those lines happen. Familiar? As of now, the Cowboys have $5.8 million in available salary cap space, but they're already over the projected cap numbers for 22 and 23. So the team can only make a minor move, a short-term move to improve this year's squad. Kawan Short may not be the player he once was. In fact, the defensive lineman played in only five games over the last two seasons because of shoulder issues. Wait a minute. But the Cowboys need help along their defensive interior. A year ago, Dallas Cowboys finished 31st its run. The team didn't add much to that position. Short on a one-year prove-it deal couldn't hurt the team. He may even be able to help. Does this person actually follow the Dallas Cowboys? Because I'm sitting here, in my mind, thinking about a guy who over the last two seasons has 10 tackles, one tackle for a loss, and not a sack. Played in five games in two seasons. Older guy. Here it is. The Cowboys, you know, we got Urban. We, we, we signed Watkins. Can, can you remember? Do you remember Carlos Watkins? He was one of the first free agent signings that we got from the Texans. Watkins right now is on the outside looking in because we also got Quentin Bohannon and O.C., you know, Urban. We got Gallimore. We got Tristan Hill who's on the bubble. Tristan Hill, a guy we drafted in the second round who's only going into his third season. He may not make the roster. So as I'm reading this article and thinking that they said that we didn't do much to address the situation, the reality is, is Carlos Watkins probably won't make the team. And at least over the last two years, he played in 16 games. That's a whole lot more than five. He had at least 24 tackles, four tackles for a loss and a sack. Why is it we are always released? Uh, people are always trying to get us to get over the hill players out of desperation if you are a writer and you're saying a move the Cowboys should make the Kawan short that'll fix the defensive line that's Don Terry Poe all over again Don Terry Poe who showed up at training camp fat on the pup list got a paycheck and didn't make it through the season before he was cut I'm okay with not wasting time money on a guy who's been injured for two years that's aging that'll come in and take snaps and reps from some of these young guys that we have stop linking everybody with the cowboys and things like that because i'd rather take a carlos watkins who's already signed and not costing me any more money who has been here working out with the team doing his dues, being part of that team that was fine for being too aggressive in practice, then get another guy who knows nothing about what you're planning on doing and plugging him in and trying to get him to work. There were many things that were wrong with our team last year. Many things. Injury was the biggest part of it. 
team had stayed healthy, we would have definitely been a better team. I can guarantee you had Dak Prescott and Tyron Smith made it through the season that, you know, the Washington football teams wouldn't be pounding their chest as division's winners at seven and nine. I can guarantee you we would have gotten at least two more victory, at least, okay? Uh, let's be clear on that. One of the other problems with the Dallas Cowboys was Mike Nolan is kind of vanilla as far as working with the players. He didn't wow them. He didn't excite them. It wasn't, you know, I look at Dan Quinn and he's more like the hot fudge Sunday with some whipped cream with some nuts sprinkled on top. Maybe even some M&Ms and that cherry. You look at that and say, oh, damn. Ooh, that looks good. Or you get a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Vanilla ice cream's not bad, but you get all the toppings and all the extras with it. You like it. So I see Dan Quinn as a guy who's more of a motivator, who has now gotten these guys and got them biting into and buying into what he's trying to teach. We didn't have any of that last year. We had so many parts from parts unknown. We had Gerald McCoy from Tampa Bay. We had Emerson Griffin from Minnesota. We had Don Terry Poe from Carolina. They all came in. Oh, and Alden Smith from San Francisco, five years off, and then to the Cowboys. We had so many different perspectives, perceptions, perspectives on football that it just got lost in the transition. It just didn't work. Defensive cohesion, a lot of it is understanding what my job is. That is key on a defense. Maybe you're not the guy that can push the pocket all the way up to the quarterback's lap. But if you understand that my job is the A gap and I have to be there to control it because the linebackers got the B gap, that's better than bringing somebody in here who can get a better push, but he's also in the B gap with the linebacker, and now the A-gap's wide open. So don't buy into this whole thing that people are saying, we need to go out and get this player and that player and so on, unless it's something like, hey, Killian cut by the Bears and wants to play in Dallas on a, you know, a veteran minimum deal. Okay. Stop thinking that we can just grab somebody and immediately will make them better. This is, unfortunately the effect of fantasy football that, you know, my roster sucked this week. I'm just going to go ahead and get a new one next week. It doesn't work that way in the NFL. And more than anything with defenses, especially a lot of it is knowing what that guy is doing right next to you. Sometimes you can give the guy that glance and he knows what you're thinking because you see something that we can make work. You get all these new guys in here in the mix that don't get the reps, you don't get that. That being said, I would be playing music right now, but I don't have it all set up. But it's cool. It's cool. Because we're going to fix this shit. So as always, friends, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. I'll see you tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, and I'll see you then.